Hi, I'm Rebecca Page and welcome to the Taylor Trench Sew Along. So we are going to, over the next week or so, make a trench coat. And what I want to do before we get started is show you what the Taylor Trench is and what the options are so that you can pick which one you want to do. So um, this is one that I've made during the sew along. I have already recorded the videos and I'm doing this at the end, even though you're seeing it at the beginning, so that you can see what I've made, which will help you hopefully in picking what options you're going to do. This is the basic trench coat. So this is the, um, the one that I've done to show you if you want to just follow along the most simple options. It's beginner friendly. There are some techniques in it where you'll need to go slowly and really follow along if you're on more of the beginner, sort of advanced beginner level. It's definitely not suitable for a novice. I would say if you haven't, if you really hardly sewed at all, practice on, they've got loads of freebies on our website. Go on to Rebecca-Page, that's P-A-G-E, Dot com, grab some of the freebies and practice with some of the simpler things first. But once you're confident, you can sew in a straight line, you can sew in a curve, you know how to put your, your needle down into the fabric, twist your fabric around and then carry on sewing so that you can get a nice sharp, um, sharp point on something. Once you can do that, you can do this coat. Just go along slowly. So for the ones out there, who, if you are someone out there who would like to do one that's simpler, um, and it's a lot less time consuming than the other option, which I'll show you in a second. This is the one to do. Um, I have done this in a um, faux animal print. Um, it feels a little bit like velvet, but it's not. Um, I don't really know what it is. I got it online somewhere. Um, and um, it has, uh, we don't have the front yokes. So there, I'll show you what the front yokes are in a moment, but there's no front yokes on this one. And when I turn around, um, there's no back yoke on this one either. So this is just a plain back. There is down the bottom here um, the vent at the back and there is, um, uh, it's got side back, 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 side back. So there are four pattern pieces running across the back um, and there is a two-piece collar, which don't be alarmed if you haven't done a two-piece collar. We go, I go through the whole thing, really slowly show you how to do it. And I've done some decorative top stitching on my back of mine, which I like because it's just, it's a, really plain coat and I wanted that um, and then it's a two-piece sleeve which again don't be alarmed if you haven't done one before they are much easier than they sound and usually there is a sleeve vent and I'll show you what that is on one of the other coats in a moment but um, what I have done here is showed you how to not do it how to skip that bit so that it just makes the coat a little bit easier a little bit quicker to sew there are two pocket options um, on the trench. One is a welt pocket, which I'll show you on the more complex coat in a moment, and then there's a patch pocket. So this is just a great big square of fabric with the lining on the inside, and you can just pop your, your hand in. I've made this one a little bit bigger because I've now got a bigger phone than I had when we first designed the pattern. So I show you how to do that as well. So there's a few little tips and tricks throughout the sew along to show you things that are not in the pattern. Um, or you can skip the pockets entirely if you don't want a pocket. Then there is usually um, a double row of buttons all the way down the front, and I have skipped those because that's a lot easier to not have to do all of them. And I've done one button up the top and then a little um, a little clasp on the inside to hold it, and I, I show you in the sew along how to do that. So that just makes that a much easier, easier to do up as well as easier to sew and this because this fabric is so soft it then just feels like a great big cardigan it feels so lovely on. Um, the whole thing is fully lined as you can see on the inside there um, and that's about it I think to show you from that one. Let me grab the next one and I'll show you that. This is my black one that I did during the sew along. It's got all of the bells and whistles so I'm going to show you what bits it's got. This is the front yoke. Um, they are on both sides. I believe originally it was to keep the rain off, uh, but it's it's a nice traditional trench coat detail. Um, there is also a um, uh, a shoulder tab up here, and then if I turn it around, you can see there's the back yoke at the top. The back yoke has a facing, and then it's got a lining underneath, and then you've got the belt going across the back with a um, traditional um, vent at the hem and back around to the front we've got buttons all the way down the front the belt um, the collar I've done a faux leather on the underside of my 
of the top part of my collar and then I've done some stitching around um, the under the the collar stand part of my collar and then if I show you my sleeve um, you can see here that this is the two-part sleeve it's got the over sleeve and the faux leather and the under sleeve is in my um, in my wool blend so hopefully you can see there's two parts to that and uh, there is a sleeve tab on the sleeve and a little vent on the bottom of the sleeve now this sleeve is set in the round which means we've got the round sleeve and the round armhole and we attach them together rather than attaching one piece of fabric to the other and then making it into a round like that so we've got the two circles join them together um, hopefully the way I explain it and go through it demystifies that um, particular process there are you would do those two different techniques either the way we've joined it here or the way you might do on a jumper um, for different types of garments and the reason we've done it here is to give you a really nice beautiful crisp edge at the top of the sleeve um, and to have the sleeve really nice and strong. Um, mine, because I've got this leather bit here, won't go really nice and round, but hopefully yours will and um, uh, hopefully that demystifies it and you enjoy putting a sleeve in in the round and really um, love it. Um, I will show you another coat I've got here. Uh, this is not one that I sew during the sew along, this is just one I already have had of the tailor at home. Um, so that you can see the lining inside. So it's fully lined. That's a nice place where you can use a really cool fabric, something really lovely. And there's also a little um, hanging loop here so that you can hang your coat if you want to. If you want to put a label in um, around where the hanging loop is, is a good place as well. And then to show you the length difference, this is the short coat. Um, it comes to um, about sort of part way down the top of my thigh. I'm quite short though, so it'd probably be a little bit further up on most people. Um, and then um, this is the long version, which comes for me, it's almost down to my knees, um, but it should be a little bit higher than that because I'm just a shorty. Um, so those are, the two, or those are the coats that I've made. You can mix and match different bits from each. So you can um, do um, these on the simple trench, you can do the welt pockets on the simple trench or the patch pockets on the more complex one. All of them are interchangeable. There's nothing you can't interchange. So pick the options that you like the most. What I'd recommend is that you look inside the pattern to see what all of the options are so that you can list them out and then tick and cross which ones you want to do and don't want to do so that you can pick. Um, what else to tell you? Someone is bound to ask what I'm wearing. This is a Mariella, which is one of our patterns. It's a knit pattern, super fast and easy. So and it's got these lovely big sleeves and it's really cozy. The fabric is from online. I don't remember where. I don't remember where I got any of these fabrics. They are all uh, ones that I've just ordered online. I'm so sorry. Um, someone will ask that, I'm sure. Um, what else is there to tell you? Fitting. So I highly, highly, highly recommend you make what's called a muslin before you start the sew along. So what that involves is getting the side front pieces, the front pieces, the side backs and the back pieces, and then the oversleeve and the undersleeve, and just tack them all together. So whiz them through your sewing machine. Don't worry about how it looks. Don't worry about finishing them, pressing them, making it beautiful. Um, and you can cut it out of an old sheet or some old piece of um, uh, woven fabric. Don't use a stretch fabric, use a woven fabric. So any old woven fabric you've got. And what you're doing with your muslin is making a test or inexpensive version of the coat that is not finished that you are just making in order to check the fit. So what you are looking for when you do that is whiz it all together, make sure to use the right seam allowances, so stitch your side fronts to your front, stitch your side backs to your back, stitch the seam line, the side seam, stitch the shoulder seam, and then attach the two bits of sleeves and then put them in. That's all you need to do. Don't do all of the rest of it. And what you're looking for is how it sits on you, where it's comfortable, where it's not. You might know that you've got um, bigger biceps, for example, um, or um, you've got wide shoulders or narrow shoulders, or maybe you've not sewed very much before and you know what your body looks like, but you've got no idea how it compares to anyone else's. So um, what you're looking for is the bits that fit you really nicely and the bits that might not fit your body as nicely. So we have drafted this for a standard body type. We use the same pattern blocks through all of our patterns. So um, 
uh, it's a pretty good guess if you've made one of our other coats before that if the armhole is too small this one will probably be too small but you don't know that yet so if you haven't made any of our patterns before um, uh, um, uh, try your muslin quickly and see how it goes together see how you find it you also might have things like a sway back for example and you don't want big wrinkles down the back of the coat you might have a smaller or a larger bust or you might be taller or shorter there are loads of guides on our website for how to do various adjustments so things like a full bust adjustment there's a, um, a free full bust adjustment tutorial on our site that you can grab and what you do with that is if you try your muslin on and you think oh it's not big enough over the bust then um, make some adjustments if you're not sure you can see your muslin doesn't fit properly but you're not sure why or what it is don't worry we've got you covered um, have a search on Facebook for the RP Sew Alongs group. It's just R for Rebecca, P for Paige, Sew Alongs. Sew Alongs is two different words. Um, and post in there, let us help you. Or if you're watching this video um, and uh, you're also in the main Rebecca Page sewing group, there's tons of people in there who have made this. This is one of our most popular patterns. So there are so many people in there who have made this. Post your picture of yourself in your muslin, clear front, clear side and clear back shots so that we can see what's fitting, what's not and let us help you try and get the fit perfect for you. Um, the bust cup the ladies is designed for is a sewing C cup. It's designed for a, a height of five foot six and all of the measurements are in the pattern. So read the pattern, make sure to measure yourself because what, um, if let's say you're doing the child's one, what might be a two to three year old child in the country where you live might be slightly different um, proportions to a two to three year old child in somewhere else or um, a size large lady might be different in your country to a size large lady in a different country. So don't guess, measure with your tape measure, pick your size based on your chest measurements so that the shoulder all fits nicely and then do a quick muslin. It doesn't take long and it's so worth it, especially when you put so much effort into a final coat to then know you're going to try it on and it's going to fit beautifully. And I think, is that it? I think that's it. I think we're nearly ready to go. So what you need to do now is get your pattern. If you've already got it, fantastic. If you don't, go onto our website and search for the Taylor Trench Coat. Our, our website is rebecca-page, P-A-G-E dot com, and search on there for the Taylor Trench Coat. Get your pattern, download it, and print it out. If you want to get the, the, you'll see there's three paper sizes when you print it out. One is A0, which is for a copy shop. So you can take that to a local printing store and get it printed out in great big sheets where you just cut around your pattern pieces and you're good to go. Or if you're in the US or Canada, you want to download the version that says US letter. You get all versions when you buy the pattern, but when you actually then look at your download list, which you'll get via email, or you can get in your My Account area on our website. Um, the US letter is the size of paper that is most commonly used in the United States and in Canada. A4 paper is most commonly used in most of the rest of the world. So get the right paper size for you and then you'll be able to print it out using your printer at home and then get sewing. If you haven't assembled a PDF pattern before, that's the last little bit of the puzzle and it's so simple and once you've tried one, you'll be converted, I hope, and then you'll be in the love of PDFs forever. Um, you print it out on your home printer, use the printing chart, it's a couple of pages into the pattern to see which pages you need to print so that you don't have to print the whole thing and then it prints out lots of pages and you follow the little grid and put one page there, the next page next to it, the next page next to it like that. So you're making a row of paper and then there'll be the next row below and you just take them all together. They all butt up against each other, slightly overlapping and you just follow the numbers. There's a little chart showing you where, what to paste together and then you'll have your whole pattern either sellotaped or pasted together and then you just cut around just like your pattern pieces just like normal so do your muslin grab your pattern and cut your fabric out i do not show you how to cut the fabric out in this video it video series um it 
because there's so many pieces it really takes quite a long time <laughs> so I'm very sorry I'm gonna leave you to it on that bit but if you need any help um, comment below ask us we're here to help and um, as we go through the sew along for each little step I, I get the pattern piece out and I show you so that you can see the name of the pattern piece and what you physically need before we then sew it so grab your pattern print it out cut your fabric make sure to do a muslin check the fit before you cut out your final good fabric and then let's go going I am so excited I love this pattern so much it's one of my all-time favorites um, and I feel so honored and privileged that you are gonna do this sew along with me and if you get stuck we are here to help there is an amazing RP team and there are so many people who have made this pattern before so please don't be shy post below ask questions ask in the groups uh, so that we can help you and as you go we are so excited to do this we want to see what you're making please post your pictures below the videos post them in the group so that everyone else is encouraged that other people are there and other people can see you what you're making um, and also so that we can it's one of the best parts of doing this is then seeing all of these amazing things come together and being able to help you any bits where you get stuck along the way so i hope you can deal with my new zealand slash uk accent and that i say everything clearly and you get it but anything you miss just ask uh, that's what we're here for and i look forward to making a trench coat with you yay let's get started hello again so we're going to get started by doing the preparation steps on the pattern you'll see if you have a look at the pdf that the um uh, the very first thing to do is to mark all of your pattern markings onto your fabric these are things like um, these dart markings here or, um, or the uh, where the um, uh, the little belt loops go or the pockets it's all of those things that are marked that are not part of what you cut out that we're going to need to use during the sew along now I will point out each of these as we go through so you can mark them as you go if you like or you can mark them all in one go now. What I'm going to do is not do them all in one go now but mark each, mark and use each one as we do it so that you can um, see what they're related to. If you want to do all of them now in one go though, go for it. What we're going to move on to next though is the back dart marking for the ladies trench coat um, and this is in the preparation step in the PDF. And I have got my, um, I, these are my homemade pattern weights, um, and I've put onto my ironing board here, I've got um, both layers of my lining, it's a duchess satin, and I've placed the, um, the two shiny sides, which is the right side together um, there, so that the, I've got the wrong side facing up and the wrong side facing down, and then this is my ironing board underneath here. So I've laid this down onto my ironing board and I've got my pattern piece on top of it. Um, my pattern piece is all a little bit um, uh, folded and scrunched. So I've, um, I've put my pattern weights there to hold it down so it's really accurate. And what I'm going to do next is take, um, you can mark darts in lots of different ways. I'm going to show you how I do it. So I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to place the pin um, straight down into the ironing board, wiggling if I need to to get past the metal so that it really squishes all the way down um, into one end of my dart and then I'm going to get another pin to do the other end of my dart and then a pin to do um, the widest points of the dart and there we go, I've hit a bit of metal in the ironing board so I've got to wiggle it around to get it in um, and then the other side there. So now I've got a pin in each end of my dart. Um, this is not how you have to mark darts, it's just how I like to do it. Um, use your favourite way if you'd like to. Uh, then I'm going to get another pin and I'm just lifting up the paper so that I can see see the stick of the um, pin just there and I'm going to place this pin right at the base of the other pin so that it's um, going into pretty much the same hole. So if I take that pin out this pin here is now marking the top of that point but onto my fabric without my paper in the way and then I'm gonna mark do the exact same thing to um, uh, put a pin into each of these holes and then once I've put the pin in I can remove the pin from the top and lift the paper off so, there we go let's get rid of the paper 
And so now I've got my one, two, three, four pins. And what I want to do now is make sure I've got a pin in both sides of the fabric because I've got uh, two layers here. I've got my left and my right back lining. Um, so I'm going to lift this. I've just put my hand under my finger underneath here and I'm lifting the fabric up so that um, these pins are all the way in. And then I'm going to just lift the pin out of the ironing board so that it's sticking up. Now if you've got a really slippery fabric you might find that your pin immediately slides straight back through the hole. Don't let it do that. What we want to do is take another pin and place it into as close to you can as the bottom of that pin there. Um, and we're going to do it for all four pins, it doesn't matter which one you start with. And then pull the one that you've just pulled out of the ironing board so it's all the way through the fabric and push the one that you're putting on this side all the way through. So now you've got a pin sticking out, they're doing that into the fabric. And I'm going to do that with all four. This might seem a bit mad, but hopefully it'll all make sense in just a moment why I'm doing it like that. Now if your pins start to slip through the fabric, um, what you can do is pull them back out a bit and just push them to the side. We're only interested in that first hole where the tip of the pin goes um, because what we want to do is then separate this so that you've got the, a pin marking the tip of the dart on one side of the lining and a pin marking the tip of the dart on the other side of the lining. So then I'm going to go through and do that. I've already put a pin in there so once I've got one on that side I'm now going to just very carefully without letting the other one slip out. Push it off to the side. It doesn't matter what direction you point it into. I tend to point them away from the dart. There we go. This one's a bit tricky because you don't want to let that one come out yet. So you can do both of them at the same time if you wanted. And then pin through there. And so on. So I've now marked all um, all four points on both sides, on both left and right pieces of the fabric. I've got the bottom of the dart, top of the dart, either side of the dart on my um, left hand, the right hand, I'm not sure, anyway, one of the back pieces. And then I've done exactly the same on the other one. And you'll see it on the wrong side of the fabric, not the right side of the fabric. So let's get rid of one of these. And we are going to now, I'm going to show you how we um, then actually put the dart together. So um, I've now got these quite secure and what I want to do is I'm trying to fold the fabric using the tip of this pin here and the tip of this pin here as a starting point so that I know that that's roughly where my dart's going to go and I'm just what I would call finger pressing the fabric, squishing it together along there so that I know it's going in the right direction and then I'm going to pull this pin out a little bit but not all the way and insert it back in so that I know that that there is where the end of the dart's going to be and it's now folded through the fabric. And I'm going to do the same thing here and you want to whoops, keep the, the this line straight along here so that you don't do it like that. You want to, when you put it through both layers of the fabric, you want it to be along the line of the dart. So that there. And then with these ones, you can either fold it along and if, it, if you are good at kind of eyeing it, you can get them so that they're in the same place. Or what I find is easier is open out the fabric a little bit and I want to take one of my pins most of the way out and I want to find the, the other end. There we go. So I want this pin here to come from its original hole, which is one side of the dart, all the way through to the hole on the other one, which is the other side of the dart. And then I'm gonna squish the fabric down and I can remove the pin from that side because I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to fold it, check it's still along that line. I don't want any wrinkles. And then I can, oh, it doesn't matter which way you push it, but then I can, now it's a little bit of pointing into the fabric. But anyway, there we go. So now I've got top of this pin down to the bottom of that pin to the top of that pin and either I can just place it on my sewing machine a pin under there I'm gonna prick myself I can place it on my sewing machine like that and I'm gonna stitch from the center out to the tip 
and then from the center out to the tip um, like that or I could if I really wanted to be um, particular about it I could place a ruler along this bit here and I could draw my line on like that or you could use a, um, a, a tracing um, roller thingy majiggy I never remember what they're called um, to um, trace it from the actual pattern piece but that's how I do it there and I'm going to go away and sew this now so I've now sewed this, but what I should have explained is why I've sewed from the middle to the outside and middle to the outside. It's to do with, um, well, there's a few reasons for it, but the, the main reason I do it here is because I want a really smooth dart. And if I stitched um, from the top down to the bottom, see as I drag my finger along the fabric, you can see it start to ripple. And what you can end up with is a little kind of pinch of fabric towards the bottom and it kind of stretches it out of shape. If you, um, it, uh, it's called directional stitching, and if you stitch from the center to the outside and center to the outside, you don't get that. So what I did was I stitched from the middle, and I didn't I didn't do a back stitch, I just stitched. Um, I just started stitching, and I left a bit of a trail here, and then I stitched along to the end, and I did not do a back stitch at the other end either. And then when I started again in the middle, going to the other end, I went, forward back a little bit over so I went over the same bit so that then secures the one that I've stitched from that side um, but with as little thread there as possible and then along to here and then I have not back stitched it at that end so now that the middle is secure what I'm going to do is just trim my threads so that they are um, gone and then um, at the at either end um, the reason I've left this open here is because if I back stitch it, my threads are all tangled. Um, if I back stitch it, it will create a little lump as I go back and forwards just there, and I want this really smooth down your back, down my back, especially if um, uh, you're using a thinner fabric on your exterior. Then you'll be able to see any lumps and bumps in the inside. So I want it really smooth. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just tie this in a knot. Um, one and then tie it in the other direction and you can tie it a couple of times if you're worried about it I know my thread holds with that um, and then I'm just going to trim it close to but not right at the bottom um, and then I'll tie it on the other end as well and then that's stitched and secure now the last little bit of the puzzle once you've stitched either side and um, uh, uh, tied a knot at the top is I now want to press my down into the center so just so you can see where I am this is the back neckline there and that's the armhole there and this is my dart and what I want to do is press this towards the center but because it's a curving dart if I just start pressing here and I press it along there what I'll end up with is a bit of a kind of bulge of fabric along here so um, what I'm going to do to stop that is I'm going to clip a little bit into the very center of this dart. I'm not going to clip all the way in, nor am I going to use the, the, the kind of end of my scissors. I'm just using the very tip of my scissors and I'm going to clip about half, um, maybe if you need to, a little bit further in like that. And I'm just doing little tiny cuts to get myself so that the dart will open up like that. Now, I know that it's sacrilege to use my thread scissors on anything except thread, but this is my one exception, is this is really um, uh, lightweight fabric. I do have scissor sharpeners as well, which I'll probably use later, because I'm a little bit pedantic like that. Um, so now I want to get my iron, and um, I'm going to um, press the start towards the center and what I'm doing here is I'm pulling my fabric away so that this fold line is right on the stitch if I don't fold the fab pull the fabric away as I stitch I can end up with it like this we you see you can see the fold is not right on the edge um, so I'm pulling the fabric as I as I press I'm more kind of ironing versus pressing I guess there um, ironing is where you move it pressing is where you just hold it to secure it or to flatten it whatever you want to call it there we go and if I if I stick if I press from the end of my dart all the way in then I get it sitting lovely and flat like that so now if I check my other side I want to just make sure that's really nice and 
um, I'm happy with that. So I'll probably run the iron over that again uh, once I don't have the camera hanging above exactly where I'm trying to iron. So do that with both of your back pieces and then we'll move on to the next step. Thank you.